Hey guys, I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are going to talk about snuffles in rabbits. Snuffles in rabbits is an upper respiratory infection caused by Pastorella multacida. The technical name for this is pastorellosis. Pastorella multacida is a gram-negative rod. Uh, essentially, gram-negative is our description of how a specific stain interacts with the cell wall of this bacteria. So gram-negative rod that will also infect many other species. Now typically it's going to be a different strain of pastorella that's going to infect these other species like cows, dogs, cats. There are many different species that can be infected. Now in rabbits, what we get is an upper respiratory infection. And typically this will manifest itself with crusting around the eyes, the nose, any sort of sneezing, sometimes panting, things like that. Now transmission, how does a rabbit get this disease, this upper respiratory infection, and why do we care so much about it? Well, rabbits can get it through direct nose-to-nose -to -nose contact. That's probably one of the more common methods, but it can also be transmitted through a fomite. Fomite, objects or materials which are likely to carry infection, such as clothes, utensils, and furniture. A fomite, such as a water bowl or a cage or bedding, anything along those lines. So what is a typical disease progression and why do we care so much about pastorellosis or snuffles in rabbits? Well, it can cause some nasal discharge to begin with and often it'll start out clear and it will go to a darker yellow and sometimes it will even transition to a red tinge if there's bleeding. Sometimes it will cause conjunctivitis, uh, which is basically an infection, or not an infection of the eye, but the tissue surrounding the eye. Sometimes it can also lead to an infection of the inner ear. Because it's a bacteria, we can see a variety of different clinical signs associated with it. And it can cause an infection in the inner ear where it will go from the oral cavity all the way up to the ear through the little canal. Now that little canal will sometimes keep things out of the ear, but it sometimes will let things in. And so if we see a head tilt or um, a head shaking or nystagmus, which is where the eyes go a little bit funky, sometimes that'll be because of an abscess related to the, the inner ear. The other thing that it can sometimes cause is pneumonia. And is, this may either be direct infection with pastorella of the lungs, but sometimes it'll also be a secondary bacterial infection causing pneumonia because of the damage that Pastorella already did. The other last thing that we sometimes will see is abscesses diffusely throughout the body. This can be the feet, it can be the ab abdomen. This can be the feet, this can be the abdomen, this can be in the thoracic cavity and elsewhere. So what are the risk factors that are more likely to have these animals develop snuffles or pastorellosis? Well, the number one thing is going to be either an immunocompromised or immature immune system. And immunocompromised immune systems can occur for a multitude of reasons, but often they're gonna be associated with some sort of stressful event. Whether that stressful event being a new animal, whether that stressful event is them being moved or transported, whether that event is some sort of other disease process that's gonna make them a lot less likely to be able to fight this off on their own. The other thing to remember is going to be an immature immune system. This is if you have baby rabbits. Now baby rabbits are going to be a lot higher risk of developing a lot of diseases, just like in people and in other animals as well. And they just haven't been exposed to the same thing as the adults have. And sometimes those adults can be asymptomatic carriers of pastorella. And so that's something that we really have to be mindful of is bringing other rabbits, even other than the parent, into that area um, because they can maybe be an asymptomatic carrier for pastorella or another disease and they may transmit it to those kids. So what kind of a treatment do we have to look for? What should we be doing? Well, there's not a lot you can do at home, unfortunately, other than supportive care. I would definitely recommend talking to your veterinarian and letting them know what is going on. And that's where the importance of finding a good rabbit vet is, is that they'll know, hey, this is most likely what's going on. And here's a couple things we maybe need to rule out before we start treatment. 
And with that, what they may do is if it's a severe case, they may supplement oxygen um, at least for a while if the cases where they can't breathe very much or breathe at all and they've gotten to the point of panting or just not breathing normally. And the other thing that they might do is nebulization. So just like in people with asthma and pneumonia, doing a nebulizer can sometimes be helpful. Um, they will just do a straight saline to help moisturize and help those lungs be able to excrete all that gunk and get them breathing normally more quickly. Antibiotics are almost always going to occur with pastrolosis in order to get recovery. Not always, there's going to be some cases that resolve on their own, but often those that are going to be noticed by people are severe enough that indicate antibiotics to help treat them. Sometimes antibiotics are going to go for two weeks to maybe six weeks. There are a small number of cases that will actually result in lifelong antibiotics, and I suspect this is usually because of some sort of abscess that the rabbit isn't able to get rid of on its own. It's walled itself off and the antibiotics just can't penetrate it. The other thing that we may add in is some sort of NSAID or anti-inflammatory. And this anti-inflammatory is going to help with the inflammation in the lungs and in the upper respiratory tract and allow them to breathe a lot more normally and tell the antibiotics are able to kick in and really fix the actual problem. So what kind of a prognosis are we looking at with this disease? If your rabbit gets this, is it a death sentence right now? Or maybe is it just fine and you don't need to do anything? Well, there's a really large variation depending on the state of the animal that gets it. There are definitely many rabbits that die from this every single year. However, there's also many rabbits that never are treated for this every year and do just fine. So it's really variable. I would say the majority of rabbits do very well and with antibiotic treatment for a couple of weeks do fantastic. There are going to be a small subset of those that need a longer course, maybe up to six weeks of antibiotics to really treat it and get rid of it. And there's even going to be some that aren't able to recover from this. And that number is gonna be very low overall. So what can you do about it? How can you prevent this in your rabbits? Well, the number one thing is transmission, right? So we need to stop transmission. And what you can do is make sure you're quarantining any new rabbits and not mixing rabbits from lots of different places all at once. And when you quarantine, make sure that you're also quarantining any food bowls, dishes, that they stay separate, that you're not handling one after the other, and just let them de-stress. Because as we had talked about, the highest risk factors are going to be stress or immunocompromised situations. And when we have an immunocompromised rabbit because of a new move, they're at a lot higher risk of developing disease. And if you wait two weeks, let them de-stress, acclimate to their environment before you start exposing them to your rabbits or vice versa. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something about snuffles. It's a very interesting disease in rabbits. It's more common than you might think, and it's not always diagnosed well. So I just wanted to educate you guys about this today. And just a reminder, this is not me diagnosing your animal. This is me trying to give you some education to be better equipped to handle different rabbit diseases and know what you should do for what. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.